Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press, and I have with me today Russ Resnick. Russ is the worldwide segment manager for one and two socket rack and tower servers. How are you doing, Russ? Pretty good, and yourself, David? I'm good, thanks, yeah. So Russ is at home, and I'm at my house too. This is the Lenovo Press social distancing edition of our walkthrough video. So Russ, we are gonna be talking about, this is the new Think System SR665. This is our new two socket, 2U rack server, which has got, Russ, the um, the AMD 7002 Epic processors, right? That's right, David. And I think we'll see in this video that uh, this is a very uh, uh, versatile, high-performance server that can be used in a variety of applications for a number of workloads. So what sort of workloads then? What, what workloads would, would, would a customer find most valuable on, on this type of system? Well, you, such things as uh, uh, VDI, you know, vir uh, virtual desktops, uh, virtualization in general, um, HPC in some cases for um, where we can put in uh, three GPUs or yep. uh, six of the uh, smaller GPUs uh, for uh, makes a great inferencing engine. Uh, and then also uh, storage, software defined storage uh, and virtualized storage work out really well on the mm. server. There's actually, as we'll show you, there's going to be a lot of configuration choices in terms of storage uh, drives and, and adapter slots. The key word here is flexibility, a very flexible configuration. You can choose to configure it however you need for the workloads you want to run on it. So, Russ, let's talk about um, what's on the front of the system. We'll spin around to the, to the back, and then we'll look inside. How about that? That's great. All right. So, at the front of the system, um, the server supports uh, 24 two and a half inch drives at the front. Uh, this is, you know, the traditional hot swap drives, um, two and a half. The server also supports three and a half inch drives. In fact, from a overall point of view, um, we can have up to 40 of the two and a half inch drives or up to 20 of the three and a half inch drives. And that's a combination of front, inside and rear drive bays. So very flexible, very high capacity storage system. Yeah, um, let me also say that the uh, inside drive bays are hot yep. swap as well. That's a good point, so, yes. So even though they're inside, um, once the server's uh, you know pulled out of the rack and the top comes off, uh, you can still hot swap those drives. Yes, yes, indeed. That's a very good point, yeah. Okay, so um, the controls on the front, let me start start on this side over here. Um, the uh, the With our optional VGA port, uh, port here, um, this is our new uh, diagnostics port, Russ. Um, what, can, what is this used for? So as you'll, I think you've got a sample there. We have an external yes. diagnostics handset, and yes, that can be used to uh, in, uh, uh, interrogate the X Clarity controller to learn such things as IP addresses, uh, where there could be potential faults in the server, and uh, to better understand the configuration of the server. Yeah, and the idea is that you plug this this handset. That's what they call this, the diagnostic handset. Plug it into the port. And that will then give you um, access uh, to the information via this LCD display. And you've got some buttons here to control as well. Um, now, Russ, you don't need one of these for every single server, right? You can share no, that's right. across a whole rack of systems if you want. Or that's more. right. Um, it has a, a, a very clever magnet on the back. So you can uh, just simply mount this, just attach it to, to a rack or something, to rack cabinet. Um, that way, you have easy access to it when you need to. So that's a very handy option to have to give you access to system information, error logs and so on, um, from, from in front of the system. Now, on this side here, uh, uh, usual array of buttons and LEDs, power button, one LED, um, three um, system identifier LEDs, the ID button blue, the system error log and system, uh, sorry, system error, and uh, the networking activity uh, LEDs as well. Uh, two USB ports, um, USB 3.1 Gen 1, and USB 2. The USD, USB 2 port also doubles as X Clarity controller local access, right? Right. So if you have a, a, a tablet or a phone with the X Clarity mobile app, you can uh, plug into uh, that port and interrogate the X Clarity controller also. But right. we recognize that there are some customers who don't really want tablets or phones in the data center, which is the reason we also now provide this diagnostics handset, which Right, you know, is is really just a, uh, a a device to view configurations and and errors yes. and such. Yes. Now I also add too, 
Um, we offer as a for configuration choice, if you don't have 24 drives in the front, you choose to only have eight or 16, then we also offer this uh, unit here, which also doubles as um, an, a, an alternative to the external handset. This is an integrated uh, diagnostics panel, and you can see it has the same controls, same display as the handset I was showing in a moment ago, um, but this is actually inside, installed inside the server. So if you're looking for this, this type of information, this type of capability, but integrated into the server, then there, we also offer this choice as well. Of course, it, the trade-off is a, fewer drives in the front, but with the additional drives in the middle and rear, maybe that's not a problem for your workload. So this option is available to you, um, should you need that. Okay, so that's the front of the system. Um, I would point out that uh, we show here the two and a half inch chassis. The three and a half is available um, as, um, correct me if I'm eight, wrong. Eight or eight, 12 drives. Mm -hmm. Right, eight, eight three and a halfs or 12 three and a halfs in the front, uh, should you wish that. And we support SAS or SATA drives or NVMe drives. Or in some configurations, we also support any bay uh, drives as well, right? Any that's bay right. is a bay that can support either SAS or SATA or NVMe if you wish. So that's those are all the choices there. Quite a variety of back plans that are available. Um, the product guide has all the information about the capabilities and, and choices. So that's the front of the system. Let me spin around to the back. Try not to knock anything over in the process. All right. So this particular configuration has three, three slots here, three slots here, and there, and you can configure it with an additional two slots here. This is a uh, cabled two slot riser to give you a total of eight PCIe slots. These are all PCIe Gen 4, and they're all um, full height by 16 lanes. Actually, I should take that back. Some are 16 and some by 8, depending on the configuration. Um, Russ, we also offer an OCP slot, right? That's right. So as we started with the uh, AMD OneSocket systems, the SR635 and 655 with the OCP slot, these systems also have the OCP slot. Right. The other thing I should mention uh, when you talk about the risers, uh, the, the uh, PCI risers is, for those customers who really don't need a PCI Gen 4, we offer also offer a set of Gen 3 risers, which for right. some customers may save some money. Sure. Uh, yep. Rather than buying, you know, the more expensive Gen 4 risers. Yes. Yes. Good point. Yes. Now, so this is a configuration with eight PCIe slots. However, if you want, let me show you the different choices. So we have instead, um, I've got a few samples to show you here. What we can instead do is put in two three and a half inch drives. Now they go in the space of the two slots on this side and the top two slots in the middle here. So you can see this is a combination with two three and a half inch drives, but you've still got access to a slot here and the three slots here. So this is one, one possible choice. Right, and, and this, and this uh, mimics what we have today with the SR650, where you can have 12 drives in the front and two in the rear. So right. that, that configurability or that alternative remains. Yes. Now, here's another choice. This one here, instead of having two drives, you're going to have four three and a half inch drives. So it again, it fits. If, let me move this one out of the way. It goes across the server. This time we're consuming more of the slots. You've still got access to a slot at the bottom on the side here and in the middle. But now you have four three and a half inch drives at the back. So this is not right. So this would allow for 16 three and a half inch drives right, in right. the server, which is a new configuration for the two socket to you uh, server uh, think system server. Right. And then here's a third drive choice. So instead of two and a half, sorry, instead of three and a half inch drive bays, you can use uh, two and a half inch drives. And this configuration allows you to have eight two and a half inch drives at the back, if you wish. Um, or you can have one with the configuration with just the four drives here, which will give you access to just a few more slots. So again, more choices available to you. But wait, there's not. There's more, right? We now have. I this think. Th I think there's more. Yes. 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 So we have this. This is a new drive style, new uh, uh, form factor. These are seven millimeter drives. Um, they are uh, solid state drives only, uh, either NVMe or or SATA. SAS. Sorry. Oh, sorry. NVMe or SATA. SATA yes. SATA, right. Mm -hmm. Yep. But these are hot swap drives. Um, now, let's compare this, Russ, to the M.2 drives that we have internally. Yeah, so these, these, this, this new configuration of rear 7 millimeter drives is really meant to be uh, boot drives. So we, right. we used to support 
uh, a pair of two and a half inch spinning drives in the back of the server that were boot drives. And then we moved to M.2 drives on the inside of the server for boot drives. But there were some customers who still wanted the ability to hot swap the boot drives, especially when they're in a mirrored pair. So by moving to the seven millimeter um, drives in the rear, uh, they can be hot swapped. And um, uh, you, you don't lose uh, two two and a half inch bays. You really just lose one slot by doing this. Right. So this is really a, uh, a move forward in how we're supporting boot drives uh, and giving the customers the ability the, uh, to have the rear facing hot swap capability. Yeah. You can see this one I'm showing you here. This has got uh, the two slots above it, um, so that's still an option. You, with, you can also get a choice without these two slots. That allows you to get to use the the three and a half or the two and a half inch drives on top of this. So these are this is not a either or. It's you can have have them both if you want, both seven seven mil and the two and a half or three and a half if you wish. Yeah. So this is also also in addition to the M.2. So. Uh, you can see here internally to the server, this is the M.2 uh, uh, M.2 adapter with two M.2 drives installed. So that's still an avail option available to you as well. You've seen this adapter on the uh, AMD one socket servers we offer, the 635 and 655. That's right. Right. So now let's let me spin it back around again and show you the the oh, actually, actually, before we go any further. Let me tell you the rest of the ports um, at, the, at the back of the system. Um, two, sorry, three USB 3.1 Gen 1s and VGA port. Um, there's also a dedicated uh, service processor port. This gives you, gives you remote access to the XPRD controller uh, service processor if you need to have access to that. And of course, the server also supports two hot swap power supplies. Uh, the server supports four different configurations, 550, uh, 750, 750 1100, 1100, and these are the 1800s here, the high-capacity high power supplies, all hot swap, of course. Right, let me spin it around and show you the internal drives. So these are the mid drives. Very easy way to get access to these. Again, as Russ pointed out, this is all available hot swap. So while the server's running, you can take the cover off and then simply lift this up, and that gives you access to those internal, the mid plane uh, hot swap drives. Um, you can see here there are um, eight two and a halves. Um, we also offer and said, Russ, uh, is it uh, four, four, three and, three and a half? And half in there as well. Yes, yes. So That's these are two different the choices. 23 and a half inch drives, 12 in right. the front, four right. in the middle, and four in the back. Yeah. And if the if you have the three and a half, then the M.2 is still present. It is, in fact, uh, just positioned on top of the three and a half inch drives. Yep. Now, of course, if you if you don't have the mid drives, but you need the additional space in the middle here for GPUs, for example, then you don't need to have the mid plane, you instead have a, an air baffle uh, like this. Um, the, the, the longer full, full length adapters would fit in these, these holes here, uh, and the M.2 rests on top, along with um, up to four super caps uh, will get mounted in this, this uh, air baffle as well. So that's all part of the configuration um, if you have long adapters like GPUs. All right, now this mid, mid uh, drive bays, these also open up all the way to give you access to the internals of the system. So you can see here, let me spin this around. You can see here, oops. You can see here we have uh, two, two AMD processors and uh, up to, uh, we've got 24 DIMMs, is that right? That, like, no, we're 32 no, DIMMs. 32 DIMMs, I'm getting my systems yeah. mixed up, yes. Yeah. Each it's, processor it, has, sorry, yeah. go Russ. No, I was gonna say each processor has, uh, has 16 DIMMs attached to it, yes, uh, eight, eight channels, two DIMMs per channel, yep. gives us uh, 32 DIMMs. Right, mm -hmm. so if you're using the 128 gig uh, memory DIMMs, uh, this system can actually support up to four terabytes of memory. So it's really quite a powerful system. Yes, it is. Processing. And, yeah. and of course, with the two CPUs, it's it's uh, four terabytes of memory and, 100 and 128 cores. Right, yes, very good. Now, why don't we also draw your attention, these new uh, these new high performance uh, heat sinks. Um, the standard, so the standard heat sink goes off of the processors and then attached to, to them via these copper pipes are these things I'm calling, we call them radiators. So there's a radiator at the front here and they sit right behind the fans. 
And the whole point here is that uh, the the copper uh, copper tubes here they contain a small amount of a liquid, a, a thermal liquid, to That's draw, right. the, draw the heat away from the heat sink into this radiator, and that cools the processes even more. And that's really the fundamental design why this system has uh, the the ability to run so many drives, so many NVMe drives, uh, the high capacity GPUs without much thermal restrictions. Because right. of these the are these are really the highest wattage processors we've put into the two socket right. two U uh, uh, system uh, up to date, and we've you know taken technology that we've used in our HPC products and the Neptune water cool technology. Uh, right. And the uh, SD530 2U4 node technology uh, to uh, build these heat sinks with these radiators. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes. Now, of course, if you don't need the high end processes um, or, or the heat removal that these things provide, we do offer, offer to the, the standard heat sinks for the lower end uh, processor SKUs. So that's available too there. Now, let me also point out to you internal to the system here in front of the fans. This is a new form factor of RAID card. Um, it's an internal adapter. It's a, a, sometimes called a compact adapter. Um, and that's, um, it doesn't occupy one of the slots at, at the back of the server. So you've still got access to those potentially eight slots. But here we have an adapter here that gives you, um, it's a 16 lane uh, 940 RAID adapter from Broadcom. Um, right next to it in this configuration, we've got a SAS expander. But really these two adapters um, are, uh, cabled and don't use up any of the slots in the back. So that's a big benef benefit too. Um, you can see the, ha the fans. There are six fans here. These are hot swap, as you can see from the orange colors. Uh, very easy to remove as a, as a pack um, for servicing. All in all, it's a very, very thoroughly designed system and very compact uh, considering how much power there is in the system. Now, I mentioned too that this is the, uh, this is based on next clarity controller. This is our, our premier uh, service processor. It gives you full access to service processor management functions. So that's integrated into these systems as well. Anything more to cover on this, Russ? No, I, I, uh, I think you've it? covered it pretty well, David. Yep. Uh, I think the key point here is that this is a, a truly a high performance and very flexible system that can be right. really optimized for a, a, a good number of workloads. Yeah. All right, so there you have it. So this is the Think System SR665. Our two socket, two U server with AMD Epic 7002 processors. Russ, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for having me. And David, you know, typically when we do these videos, we talk about the Executive Briefing Center and more. Yes, Marshall. yes, indeed. Well, yes. unfortunately, it's closed right now. However, the virtual briefings are going on. So, you know, if you're interested in having more discussions about these products and others, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, please feel free to get with your Lenovo seller or business partner, and we'll happy to arrange a virtual briefing just as well as, a, as we could do a physical briefing in the past. Very good, excellent, yep. Great, thanks again, Russ. Thank you. Yep, hope you found the video useful and we'll see you later. Bye for now.